Now, this is an interesting story to me because I think this may be kind of risky. Uh, and what I mean by that is that on the one hand, people will be now presented with a choice. They'll ha have to either pay the uh, subscription fee or not do it and continue to see ads. But it changes the psychology. For the people who pay, they may feel resentment that they're having to pay for something that used to be free. And for the people who don't pay, they may feel resentment that they're getting the shoddy version of, of YouTube, that they're getting the annoying version. All of a sudden, those ads are something that other people don't have to look at. And, uh, and it, I, it just seems like there's a risk of them creating dissatisfaction where before there was no dissatisfaction, at least from the user point of view. What do you think of that? Is this uh, a risky move on their part? I, I think it might be, but certainly, I mean, part of what they're trying to do here is, or what they're claiming they're doing here is, is providing new original content uh, that wasn't available at all before. I think they're kind of positioning this uh, as much as they can uh, as a new service. But uh, in order to put it together, they're, of course, drawing on existing uh, YouTube talent. So it is possible that, that current YouTube users, uh, fans of uh, current YouTube stars, uh, might feel that something is being taken away from them if they don't want to pay uh, $9.99. And of course, many of us already pay for a number of uh, video streaming services. So uh, adding one more in might just seem like too much at this point. Are there any reliable projections of like how many people would sign up for this service? Nothing that I've read. Um, you know, they. It sounds like they've done a fair amount of uh, market research and 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 questioning, especially around, uh, puzzlingly around the name, which which I think is really uh, just a, a terrible joke of a name for for a variety <laughs> of reasons. Uh, but uh, you know, they really think that this is going to be something that that resonates with their current users. Um, but I haven't seen projections yet as to how many they think uh, might be jumping on board. Regarding the name, you said it sounds like a porn site. And in fact, Fortune points out that there's an actual porn site called RedTube. Uh, right. And so, you know, I think um, Google's response to accusations that sounds like a porn site is that, oh, you know, we're YouTube. Like, we're, you know, we, we have the branding magic. Nobody's going to pay attention to those other sites. But I'm not so sure that that's correct. I think you might be right that this is a, a mistake. Um, what's your thinking at this point? Do you think that eventually people will just come to see uh, YouTube Red as just a normal uh, a, a name? Or, or is that Red too, you know, associated with, I guess, a red light district or something like that? Sure, yeah. Um, you know, I think that the reaction to this story, I mean, a lot of the press uh, yesterday after they formally announced this was precisely about that, was about uh, the fact that it sounds a little porny. Uh, YouTube, uh, Google uh, told uh, Nat Garen of uh, NextWeb uh, that they uh, had done some research on, on Red and found that their users associated with love and, and in fact that they already associated for some reason that color uh, with uh, with YouTube itself, um, I'm just not sure that that is uh, uh, correct. Uh, and but I guess it remains to be seen. Uh, I uh, have trouble associating it with anything else other than uh, than RedTube uh, at this point. RedTube, of course, as I point out in that article uh, that I wrote, uh, takes uh, its own name uh, from YouTube. So in some ways, uh, YouTube is a victim of its own success uh, in in that. Uh, particular association.